this is the room here. Welcome back to our live Baxter out. Uh, it's been some time since I last recorded, so I kind of faintly remember what we're doing, kind of. Um, so I'll venture to ask you if you'd be willing to share more about your family history. Who wants to learn about us, right? Oh, it made sense. Your family wasn't a mother and father who had children born to them. He knew that much. There are more ways than one that, could, that you all could have come together. You didn't remember ever explaining anything to him. Alright. That's fine, I don't mind talking about it. You can at least give him the highlights. Baxter humored many of your questions about him. Getting to know each other better was a two-way street. I'm adopted, and Liz is too. We're from different places, and we're adopted at different times. But we both were really young. We've spent almost our entire lives together. I see. So it's not, it's not that bad, you know. Well, it's fantastic how you have made your own beautiful family. Thanks, Baxter. His words made you feel warm inside. You respected how easily he took it. It made you wonder about his family's situation. He had been rather close mouthed about it so far. And again, the two-way street analogy came to mind. Are you and your parents blood related? Oh yes, we certainly are. Could have sworn we are... Maybe I assumed that they were. <laughs> his voice took on a certain amused bent. His lips stretched thin. My parents might have, well, have well been through with me many times over if I wasn't their own flesh and blood. Before you could ask what he meant by that, he chuckled. <laughs> Sorry, no, that is me being dramatic. The family and I'm their son. That is what matters at the end of the day, blood related or not. Why is he why is he wording it so funny? Alright. Okay. It's nice your parents care about you. Do they? <laughs> you wouldn't voice a flicker of worry. I'm thankful for that as well. No. Okay, they do. If I wasn't the boy they raised together in any capacity, then there would be problems. He laughed some more and brought his fingers to his lips. That topic was over. Well, he pulled at the collar of his roommate's shirt. He get, his gaze searched out the room's ticking Good clock. Night. It's been a delightful day, but I should not linger forever. There is much to do tomorrow. Good night, Michiko. He stood in with slight wave, he grabbed his back to go. I was gonna say, aren't we in his room? No, we're not going to trick him. Let's come on. Where are you going? Uh, suddenly, <laughs> suddenly flustered Baxter scratched the back of his zebra head. Or piano head, as a wise bartender once said. Baxter then grinned down at you. Hmm. That is correct. He stiffly returned to his chair and sat with one knee held up to his chest. Then I will, in fact, stay right here. You, however, are welcome to go when you're ready. You got to your feet, sparing him from further embarrassment. With you, with you moving to leave, Baxter found his shoes very interesting. I hope you get some sleep. Baxter hesitated to reply. You paused, sensing that he would answer. He just needed a little more time to choose the right words. Well... I do intend to sleep, but in truth, I don't expect it will be soon. I'll be packing after you take your leave, and after that, who knows? You tilted your head, confused but curious. Baxter chuckled and tapped his foot. I said, who knows, didn't I? I don't- okay, I'm not following what you're dropping down. <laughs> you frowned defeated. He snorted at you, and it was difficult keeping a straight face. All right. Okay, that's not exactly correct. I'll admit I know myself fairly well. I also am aware of a drink station in the lobby that is open at every hour. There's also a fire that stays lit all throughout the night as well. I'm expecting that instead of being in bed like a proper young man, I will end up in the lobby with a cup of tea. Would you mind some company? Now that's an idea. Please get some sleep. Baxter, that's a bad idea. You looked at him wide -eyed and, with wide-eyed intrigue. You sighed and shook your head. Listen, this is the last night. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. He paid for it. He paid for the experience. Now, would he want some company or no? I don't know if he's offering an invitation without actually asking. Or he actually he's just answering the question but doesn't want me there. Do you mind some company? Hot drinks by the fire sounded lovely. You hoped that he was fine if you wandered down yourself. Oh. I don't like these games that you're playing. <laughs> I'd rather you just be upfront with me, please. You narrowed his eyes and his smile curved up more. Am I the bad influence here, or are we enablers to one another? The latter. Enablers. You're not a bad influence, but... You're a very bad influence. No one can no one can make me worse. Neither. I've got to look out for you. I'm a worse influence than you. No, we're enablers. Yes, I thought so. Well, we haven't gone off the rails yet, so I believe we should be fine. 
We're drinking tea anyway, it's not literally like we're getting drunk out here. This amusement was tangible and you were already looking forward to the next outing. I'll text you when I've made it to the lobby. His eyes twinkle with a familiar mischief. You'd keep your phone close. See you. Good night, Michiko. For now. With that, you twisted the handle and left. You make it you made it to your own identical room, conveniently right next door. The door's dead bolt clicked shut behind you and clicked on and you flicked on the lights. Despite the new illumination, the suite was not as bright as Baxter's room. Literally looks the same to me. <laughs> How was Baxter's room so lively while yours was this? You sat on your cold bed inside. Probably because you miss him and he's the light of your life. A familiar carpet was spread beneath your feet. The walls were unmatched. The same pictures were attached to the wall. Physically, there wasn't a difference. The change was the fact that now you were by yourself. After spending all day with Baxter's grin, you were lonely in its absence. But at least that wouldn't last long. You'd see Baxter again soon, one way or another. The last and only full day of your mini vacation was drawing to a close, and the warm night pressed, ba bl pressed black and silent against the window pane. You tuck yourself into bed for a break, but had left all the room lights on. You didn't want to fall asleep yet, naturally. You'd idle, you idled the minutes away by counting the planks in the ceiling. Eventually, there came the jingle of a text arriving. Unlocking your phone, you saw that Baxter sent you a message. It was short and to the point. I'm downstairs. He'd finally finished his packing. There was no need to respond. He knew you were coming. You wiggled out from under the covers and hopped off the bed, eager for this secret meeting. Is it really a secret? <laughs> it's just between you two. You crept into the hall, which was brightly lit. Although the other patrons were holed up in their rooms for the night, no staff were manning the front desk. It was dead quiet and still. As you patted your way downstairs, the omnipresent silence seemed like it was something you could touch. A thin blanket swaddling you. Your footsteps and breathing felt muffled. In spite of that, the air was fairly cold. The, co the grand foyer had high ceilings and the... Mez... Mez... <laughs> Mez... Mezzanine, mezzanine, floors and wide open space invited a permanent draft. The central fireplace might come across totally pointless in the middle of the summer in California, but that wasn't giving it, uh, that wasn't giving it its due. Now blazing bravely against a cello was a welcome beacon of comfort. Surrounding the hearth was a raised stone platform. There you could see a lone seated figure silhouetted against the flames. It was Baxter warming himself by the fire. A paper cup was clutched in his hands, a pale film with steam rising from it. He hadn't changed into his pajamas, still sporting that khaki interloper. Interloper? Interloper? He must have counted on nobody else being around to see the horror of that late. The dull thud of feet on the carpeted floor heralded your approach. His portrait smoothly transitioned from a profile to a three-quarter view. His eyes met yours and he grinned. Chico, glad you could make it. Rolling the thin cup slowly between his palms, Baxter jerked his head over to one side, drawing your attention to a long table up against four walls. Very well. The drink station is over there, if you care to partake. A beverage of some kind might be just a thing to top off our late night rend of you. Back in a second, you know, you could use a drink, I'll pass. You shook your head. Uh, let's nod. I think I would be already tired as fuck, so my voice would just be shot. The crossing the lobby, you stand in front of the refreshment bar. If there's hot chocolate, we're going for it. It was covered in a thick tablecloth the color of fresh snow, and a neat arrangement of clean crockery had been laid out on top. There were a couple of jugs of hot water and a wide selection of different drink packets and individual tea bags next to those two two more urns of pre-made urns. <laughs> two more urns of pre-made coffee had been labeled regular and decaf. A carrot carof, carafe, uh, whatever, off to one side seemed to house spiced apple cider. Ooh, the men are. What are these words? The menagerie, menagerie. I don't know. Of liquid containers were completed with three smaller silvery ones, each one containing a different kind of milk. They were sti They weren't stingy on the options. That was for sure. You decided to go for hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Okay, uh, let's still look, but hot chocolate's there, so I'm going for hot chocolate. Peppermint tea, chamomile tea. Chamomile's good, right? To drink before you sleep. Fruit tea, green tea, breakfast tea, regular coffee, decaffeinated coffee, hot chocolate, cider, hot water. See, now, if, if, if hot chocolate wasn't there, I would have went for the cider. And now, if the cider wasn't there, I would have probably went with one of the teas. Alright, hot chocolate. Picked up a cup, tore open one of the satchels of hot chocolate, and let hot water run the over the powder. He mixed it with one of the coffee stirrers nearby, relishing the sugary chocolate smell. He snapped on a lid and ambled over to the fireplace again, Baxter raising his drink to tap it gently against yours. 
Welcome back. What's your poison? I went for a Briggs and Cup of Peppermint Tea myself. I got hot chocolate. Delightful. A momentary flash of realization crossed his face, and then he let out a huff of amusement. It appears we find ourselves out to drinks yet again. Oh, we did! What the heck, Uchiko? I must apologize for the lack of originality. I promise I do other things in my spare time occasionally. It really was starting to become a theme with the pair of you. You found yourself smiling to your cup. Baxter scooted over on his perch, patting the stonework with his free hand to indicate that you should take a seat beside him. What was I doing to standing? <laughs> you plopped yourself in front of the fire, relishing the cozy glow on your skin and the heated slabs beneath you. Baxter was staring absently into the grate. As you sat there with him envelop enveloped in the warmth of the fireplace and the closest of his presence, you felt... Sleepy, safe, comfortable, like you could have drifted off right then and there. Bax. Baxter slowly sipped his tea and then cups, set his cup down next to him. It's funny, more than once on this little excursion, I found myself forgetting that I'm supposed to be on a summer vacation. Hmm. Especially right now, curled up in front of a fire, cradling a cup of something hot. It puts me in mind of long autumn nights, when the days are beginning to waste away to nothing. And this decor too, the wood, the stone, the grand grandeur? I might have believed myself to be back in my childhood home in Oregon. Really? He lifted a leg up onto the edge and tucked his knee under his chin, still focused on the burning light. His expression was distant, wistful. Yes, it's one of the reasons I chose this hotel, as a matter of fact. Though I never lived in a in lived in a building on this scale, the effect is similar. You could say that I was raised in a big cool house. Cool in the sense of impressive rather than underheated. That was what my friends used to call it. I loved it when they would come and visit. There was scarcely anything better. They never got over the sense of awe, and I ate it up. I like to think of myself special in those days. To be young and innocent. His features mel mel melted into a form that was more familiar, a curt little smile. How strange. Usually I find indulging in nostalgia to be un an unpleasant endeavor. But here and now, it's easy and it's nice. <sighs> I suppose it's because for once I can share my thoughts with another person, rather than ruminating on the past by myself. Well, that's a little, that's a little depressing. His eyes peeked. Uh, as, as, what are these words? As, askance to yours, before returning once more to the flames. You place your hand lightly over his where it lays on the stone. You scooch closer just enough for your arms to touch. You let yourself rest fully against him, one cheek on his shoulder. I mean, he did this to me earlier in the day. I, I kind of don't know what our... We're in a relationship, right? Or are we not? We're just friends with Benny. <laughs> I mean, technically, we're just a summer a summer romance thing that we both mutually agreed on. So you know what? Go for it. Go all in. You leaned into it and gave a sigh of pleasure. You, you had made him happy. Nice. Nice. At least I'm making somebody happy in a video game. <laughs> um, Tyler and I have been playing Boulder's Gate and we are on our second playthrough. We're about to finish the second playthrough. And I have been trying to fucking win a Starion's heart. And I made a crucial mistake in Act 2 where I completely fucked up and didn't interact with one character that progresses his, like, love for us more. Because my dumb ass decided to just go up in the building, in the castle, and just kill everything. And the lady, I she I didn't see her dead body. So I was I was assuming she ran away during the, the crisis of me attacking a castle. And since then, Astarian's like, fuck you, we're over. And I have gone on too far in the game to revert back. And if you guys play Borders Gate 3, you wouldn't understand. That game takes hours of your life. So I... Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna go act three... Or uh, play through number three and try to win his heart again. But, you know, fuck it. At least with visual novels, I can save and revert back to the save point. And it's not gonna take me a hundred hours to win somebody's heart again. <laughs> it hasn't been easy to find anyone to reminisce. Reminisce with, not for a while, but then again, I only developed the sentiment sentimentality once I'd gone off to college. I was too young and proud for that sort of matter to before then. There wasn't anything in my life to harbor much sentiment sentimentality for. I suppose leaving was the catalyst, isn't it always? But once that part of my mind has developed, there wasn't anyone around to share the emotions with. 
My classmates and I, we don't have that kind of relationship. Well. Now, this may be a complete shock to you, but I've been told that I can come across as a bit too forward. I know, it can be hard to believe. Your face cracked into a grand understatement of the year, anybody. My intent is to be open with people so we can connect. It almost never works out that way, though. I've had to come to terms with the fact that I don't possess a knack of making friends. Knack for making friends. It was obnoxiously easy when I was a child, especially due to that aforementioned big cool house. But now I keep finding myself at a loss for how to do it. With the hit or miss endeavor, the vast majority of the time I come up with a miss. Only lately it's been different, incredibly different. I almost worry my luck won't last. His voice has dropped to a low murmur, barely audible over the crackling wood in the grate. It will all be over soon. It was an echo of what he'd said after your hike this afternoon, but this time it went one small step further. I wish I could stay. Oh, we'll find each other again. We'll be soulmates. <laughs> his eyes were closed now and a shallow crease had appeared in his forehead. You understood that he was talking about more than your short, short scent in this hotel. I don't want it to end either. Listen, I don't. This is a summer romance, but, but it'll be a great story to tell to ourselves in the future and we link up again somehow it was wonderful while it lasted you can visit again someday even once it's over there are things to look forward to you squeeze his hand tight for a moment you slowly acknowledged uh, nodded in acknowledgement i think here he would want a verbal acknowledgement over a physical acknowledgement right at least uh i would means a lot Michiko thank you you're welcome baby boy but anyway this is where we're gonna end for today's episode off we're gonna um I really I don't want to rank the, the 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 ranks of the guys already but for sure Derek's at number three I'm sorry <laughs> Derek you're lovely I love the whole childhood friendship to lovers but technically that's Cove Cove is technically childhood friends to lovers um Derek he, I don't know what Derek's trope would be. Because it feels like right person, but wrong time. But if you clearly play Derek's route, that trope won't work. <laughs> what would his trope be? I don't know. I don't know. But um, I'm digging, I'm digging Baxter's whole thing. Like us being a summer romance situation. I don't know if we keep in contact after this though. But if we don't, it'll make it even more great. Because then in the future, we find each other again. Because we technically, if I did it correctly, we would have seen him in our childhood. And then we would have met him again. And then we'll meet him again. It's fate, it's soulmates, bro. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hello, Romas, this is Rome here, and welcome back to our life, Baxter DLC. We are here having a cute little fireplace late night drinking with Baxter. He laughs into silence once more, becoming engrossed in his own thoughts. You found that what you're you found that you were doing the uh, You found that you were doing the same. Des desperate disparate. Emotions drifting in and out of clarity. You both lingered a while longer, but your cups had been emptied and the fire was getting low. Baxter sighed. Oh. Unfortunately, we'd best call it quits here. We can't stave off the morning by avoiding sleep altogether. You agreed wordlessly. You got up from the fireplace in unison. At some point, you'd start holding hands, as though you couldn't remember when. You climbed the stairs and walked down the hall in a companionable quiet. Pausing in front of the doors your, to your side-by-side -side rooms, Baxter cleared his throat, letting his hand fall from yours. Thank you. Thank you once again for accompanying me, Chico. It's been an enjoyable evening. Until tomorrow, then. His back was to you as he reached into his rear pocket, fetching his key card. Good night, Baxter. You unlocked the door to your room and stepped inside, heading straight for bed. You collapsed into it, your mind starting to lose its grip on consciousness the second you hit the mattress. A new day greeted you suddenly, and without warning, sunshine streaming in through the windows. The curtain simply stood there and let it happen. You forgot to draw them shut. The end to your miniature holiday had come. You promptly got out of bed and began to pack, following your usual routine as best as you could. You didn't end up seeing Baxter again until after 11 o'clock. As promised, you'd taken a, a lion after burning the midnight oil, and had to make a last mad dash in order to check out at noon. Luckily, you managed your departure without too much of an issue. The two of you loaded, the, loaded up the car and set off for home. 
Home for one of you at least. While you're returning to your normal life, Baxter with his dad exchanging one kind of vacation for another. Yo, his two months of vacation is kind of jam-packed. I kind of like that though, because I love having something to do every day. Or maybe you thought watching a California landscape drift past the window. Baxter was leaving his own version of normal behind right now. The mountainside lodge had been home away from home for him. A simul... 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 simulacrum? Simulacrum? Of his life in Oregon. Much more familiar than a sleek condo by the sea. You continue to reflect on this as the road rolled out before you. Occasionally, you would swap comments with Baxter on random subjects, at other times retreating into the privacy of your own head. Rapidly, your time up on a mountain was fading into memory. You were lucky. You were lucky. You decided to have seen the small piece of Baxter. He had entrusted to, to you a shard of himself, a tiny spark of light, shining from somewhere deep inside. You understood him better, even if only a fraction. That was probably the only glimpse into the real life of Baxter War that you'd get. Oh shit. Uh... I'm going to just fuse this. <laughs> this is literally just two minutes. All right, well, we only have one more DLC to go. Planning. It looks like we're planning a party of some sort. So the next steps it will be the last DLC of this. What, what did they call it? Step? This step. It's not step four, which is the final step. But thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.